Um, good evening, everybody, and welcome to uh, the Columbus Common Council regular meeting tonight, and welcome to those that are also streaming. Um, if you would please stand and join me with the Pledge of Allegiance. Roll call, roll call. Oh, roll call. Sorry. Boy, I get right on the, right on the ball. I'm ready to go. Roll call, please. <laughs> Finkler? Here. Hammer? Here. Gray? Present. Motif? Present. Reed? Here. Rolke? Present. Steiner is excused. Okay, now Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have had notice of open meeting and uh, we'll look uh, for an, a motion to approve tonight's agenda, but we need to just clarify on the regular meeting and the com uh, committee of the whole meeting that uh, Alder Steiner was excused because he was on vacation. It shows him present, but uh, he was actually excused. And then you also have an updated um, for the consent agenda. So if I could have a motion to approve the agenda as amended. I will move to approve the agenda as amended. Alder Rokey will second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Finkler and a second by Alder Rokey to approve the agenda with the amendments made. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next on the agenda is uh, to approve the um, or correspondence and communications. So first we have uh, Randy Keene. So if you could go up to the podium, state your name and your address, please. It's the face with the... There we go. There we go. There you okay. go. Okay, it's been a while. So, uh, Randy Keene, 115 Greenview Drive. I was the city's fire chief from 2009 to 2021. Um, so I'd like to thank Mayor Hammer for reading a letter uh, from me in my absence at the July 25th council meeting. I wish I could have been there in person, but I was out of state. Since then, I've discovered a couple more items I that I feel I need to be brought to the council's attention about the former Countryside Ford uh, property at 1149 West James Street. In my previous letter, uh, I mentioned how the City Council in 2016 was proactive and unanimously approved the installation of a conduit for future fiber optic cable extending from City Hall to the former Countryside Ford site. This was for the purpose of connecting the future fire station at that site to City Hall and was to be installed during the James Street reconstruction project in 2017. <laughs> I recently found that the expenses incurred to do that were as follows. There was a charge of $3,200 to add it to the DOT's street reconstruction plans. When you consider that adding the conduit later after the street uh, construction had been completed versus installing it during the reconstruction, it was money well spent. According to records from Columbus, Wisconsin, uh, Columbus Water and Light, the actual installation cost totaled $20,905.50. Add the $3,200 charge for the plans and the total comes to $24,105.50. Uh, if a fire station is not put at this site, this council will have squandered over $24,000 of the taxpayers' money, money that was allocated by a common council in 2016 that had a plan. I will submit a copy of these records to Mayor Hammer when I'm done. Another issue that I discovered has to do with a loan that the city applied for and acquired in 2016. The city applied for a loan from the Board of Commissioners of Public Lands Trust Fund Loan Pro uh, Program. The requested amount uh, of the loan was $800,000. The breakout of the $800,000 figure for the fire station and library would be $700,000 for the purchase of property for the fire station and $100,000 for the purchase of property for the library. 
This figure for the library would be confirmed by the minutes of the October 17th, 2016 council meeting, which showed the council's approval of paying $100,000 toward the purchase of the current library annex with a balance of the funds coming from the library board. The minutes of the November 1st, 2016 council meeting show that the council unanimously voted to waive the contingencies and approve the purchase of 1149 West James Street using funds from the aforementioned State Trust Fund Loan Program. On the application, the city had to show the purpose for which the money would be used. In bold type, the city listed the purpose as financing purchase of land for fire station and library. This was shown four times in bold type throughout the application. On the page marked for a uh, form of record, the wording was expanded to the following. The sum of $800,000 for the purpose of financing the purchase of land for fire station and library and no other and for no other purpose. So it's right here. If the property is not kept for a fire station, it seems that the city did not submit a forthright application for funds and especially in light of the aforementioned and for no other purpose. And I will submit a copy of this to Mayor Hammer as well. These are just two reasons added to what I submitted last month as to why the property should be retained by the city for a future fire station. But the most important reason is location. As I mentioned last month, I looked at seven other sites or other areas in the city that had a lot big enough for a fire station. However, all were not good sites for various reasons. The West James Street location would provide optimum response times for the firefighters to get to the station as well as respond to emergencies. If a station is not built there, where will it be built? Any decision on this site will affect the residents of Columbus for the next 50 plus years. If a station is built on an inferior site, we will have to live with it for 50 years or longer. I heard the excuse that the city wants to get that property back on the tax rolls. I can understand that thinking, but what is more important, having dollar stores and retail stores that will come and go over the next 50 years, or having the optimum location and response times for emergency services for the next 50 years. I know there's a closed session scheduled tonight with this property as a topic. I ask that the council and staff take a longer, a long and hard look at this for the sake of future generations of Columbus citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And next we have uh, Assemblyman William Penterman. He's got it on. Okay. Thank you. All right. Hello, everybody. I'm Will Penterman, proud resident of the city of Columbus. I live three blocks away. I just walked here um, on this beautiful but muggy summer day. Um, so. Uh, there's a lot going on in the state assembly. Uh, a few things I want to talk on. There's um, many things we could talk about. Um, but big things are uh, we passed the state budget. Uh, that was passed and signed uh, by the governor um, early in July. Um, so we're, we've completed that process. Um, and I, I also want to talk about shared revenue uh, real quick. So shared revenue uh, is one of those issues that's um, it's been a concern of many local municipalities for since I was a very young child, let's say. Um, so Wisconsin was actually one of the first states in the country, it was the first state in the country to implement a state income tax. And from that, um, originally 90% of that went to the local municipalities through what's referred to as the shared revenue program because um, it was generally at the, the local level where uh, services could be provided best as local municipalities generally know what's going on best in their local local uh, community. Uh, but over time, that number kind of flipped. So it used to be about 90% went back through shared revenue. Um, and recently, it's only been about 10%. So the state's been keeping more money for state programs and less has been distributed to the local municipalities through shared revenue. 
Uh, so this is one of the, the, the key problems we saw going into uh, session. Um, so I won't get into the ideas and the credit and whatnot because the discussions have been ongoing for the last year or so. But essentially um, what ended up happening was 1% of, um, well, excuse me, one cent on the overall sales tax. So Wisconsin is a 5% uh, general state sales tax. But one penny of that five cent sales tax on every dollar purchased will now go directly to our local municipalities. So as the economy grows, our local municipalities are going to get more of that money. And um, specifically, I'd like to focus on the city of Columbus. So the, the uh, percentage increase varied from municipality to municipality on who got exactly how much. Um, but uh, the city of Columbus specifically will see a 28% increase um, in its 2024 um, total uh, aid increase through uh, the existing uh, uh, municipality aid and the uh, uh, supplemental municipality aid. Um, so it's important because, I mean, let's not be naive about the effects of inflation. The price of everything has been going up. Um, and as uh, citizens, I've been expecting more. You know, we all want quality fire, EMS, uh, we all want, you know, quality municipal services. Um, so I, I was very proud of the overall bipartisan effort that was um, that, that was over undertaken in the end to bring this about. Uh, it was a true team effort. Um, you know, politics is oftentimes kind of a, a messy ordeal, and there's you know name calling, and then don't get me started with the media not going with good quality press releases and whatnot, but that's another story for another day. Um, but just very, very pleased with the, with the work that went into uh, making this happen. Um, with the budget, um, so Wisconsin um, entered the uh, budget season with a surplus, so we're in a good, uh, a good fiscal state, um, unlike certain other states in the union. Um, so it was, it was my goal that we're going to invest in key priorities, um, shared revenue, one of those big things, uh, education, uh, and then fixing roads, roads and transportation, you know, just basic governmental stuff. Um, but also, um, a lot of that surplus was taken in through overtaxing. So that's the people's money. It was my intention that a lot of that needs to be returned to the people of Wisconsin. Uh, so included in the budget that I voted for was the largest tax cut in Wisconsin history. Um, Super, super proud of the effort that went into that as well. Uh, unfortunately, most of that was vetoed by the governor for reasons I'm not going to get into. Um, he just seems to have a different direction, different, different ideas and whatnot. Uh, won't get into the politics of it. Um, but overall, um, we're still we're going to be getting underway with our fall legislative session, where there's there's more. Um, more legislation will be undertaking. Uh, one specific bill, I won't get into all of mine, um, but that I'm very, very proud of um, is, is the fi personal financial literacy bill. So this bill will require uh, one semester of personal financial literacy for all graduating high schoolers. So that at some point, you have to take at least one semester of personal financial literacy. And we're not teaching kids how to become Fortune 500 investors. We're teaching them about the very, very basics of good financial management. How to balance a budget, how to responsibly use credit, uh, how to open a bank account. Just very, very basic things. Um, a lot of our best schools throughout our state already uh, have such a requirement, but it's about mm -hmm. time that we bring all our schools uh, up to speed in this regard. Um, briefly, I just want to touch on, uh, I have the distinct uh, privilege of being part of the Wisconsin uh, Historical Society Board of Curators. I actually uh, had a meeting down there in yes uh, yesterday down in Madison, uh, and they took me into uh, some of the archives, and uh, uh, they, they knew I was coming because right there on the, the conference table, they had a number of maps uh, from a random city they happened to pull out, uh, City of Columbus. So uh, it, was, it, was, it was really neat um, to see um, you know, how things have changed and how things have stayed the same um, all the way going back uh, to the 19th century. Um, and I, I, I will um, just let you know that a lot of those maps are available online through the Wisconsin Historical Society website. Up until about 1930, 
because then you run into some copyright issues. Uh, but I encourage everyone, you know, if you're fascinated with history and how things have changed, stayed the same, check it out. Uh, a lot of good resources there. Um, so it's it's just a, a really really neat experience. Um, I also, um, at the request of uh, Alder Rolke, um, I had a Wisconsin state flag flown over the Wisconsin state capitol um, that I will present to um, you, Mr. Mayor, and, and Alder Rolke. Um, but first, I, uh, I will stop talking and take any questions you might have. Does anybody have any questions? Thank you for Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it very much and appreciate what, you, what you've what you done with that. So. Absolutely. I also have a little certi certificate that certifies it was flown over. Yeah. There you are. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Then, Nick, I will hand this over to you, uh, and then you can have the guys um, take the flag down. We can put that one in to keep and put this one up in its place. So, so thank you. Thank you very much. All right, as we move on uh, to consent agenda, uh, Council and Committee of the Whole minutes with the amendments, uh, the approve the operator licenses with the uh, the updated uh, piece that you had and then we have a street closing request of uh, the Columbus School District for a color run and Janet Sawyer is here in case anybody would have any questions regarding the the color run so. Alder motive oh. would like to make a motion to pass the consent agenda with the amendment uh, regarding Alder Steiner's attendance at the last meeting and the additional licensee on the uh, for the 2023-2025 licensing period. Alder Rolke will second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Modif and a second by Alder Rolke to accept the consent agenda uh, with the amendments in there. Uh, any further discussion on this? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hey, okay, motions carries. And thanks, Janet, for your efforts with the, uh, the upcoming co color run. So. Okay, and we will move on to new business. Um, no, item number one, the application has been withdrawn by the owners per our safe built uh, inspector. So with that, we will then move on to item number two, which is the uh, con consider and take action on resolution um, 7-23, and it's a resolution amending the final resolution authorizing public improvements and levying special assessments against benefited properties. So if we could have a motion to Adopt resolution number 7 23. Alder Finkler will move to adopt resolution 7 23. Alder Motive will second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Finkler and a second by Alder Motive to adopt resolution number 7 23. Uh, any discussion on this? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. And next on the agenda is to consider and take action on the updated or on uh, planning and zoning interim services with Vanderwall and Associates. Um, the uh, Chris Schwartz had uh, presented this last time, and so if there's this. Could have a motion to approve using them as an interim. Alder Motif will make a motion to improve um, that we engage Vanderwall and Associates to provide the interim planning and zoning assistance to the city. Alder Rolke will second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Motif and a second by Alder Rolke to approve using Vanderwall and Associates to provide interim planning and zoning assistance. Is there any? Further discussion on this item? 
Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Do we, or we take the, a roll call? Yeah, yeah, money, uh, yep. Good, thank you. <laughs> roll call, Pat, please. Gray? Aye. Motif? Aye. Reed? Aye. Roki? Aye. Finkler? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, next. Next on the agenda is to uh, approve the uh, license application change for uh, Cardinal Lanes. And this was all presented uh, last meeting by Jason of Cardinal Lanes. Alder Finkler will move to approve the alcohol application to change premises description for Cardinal Lanes. Alder Motif will second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Finkler and a second by Alder Motif to approve Cardinal Lane's uh, license application change. Uh, any further discussion on this item? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next on the agenda is uh, to approve uh, CHLPC's Facebook request and I believe that was with working with David to uh, in establishing the Facebook page for them. So we would need a motion to approve them for their Facebook request. Alder Gray moves to approve the CHLPC uh, creating and maintaining a Facebook page. Alder Rolke will second. I have a motion by Alder Gray and a second by Alder Roki for CHLPC to uh, to start and maintain a Facebook page request. So, any discussion on that? When we say maintain, it means that David's going to maintaining it, going to be maintaining it, or are they going to have? Because I thought we had talked previously about wanting to make sure that it was nobody could post on the page and that David was going to work with them. So I just wanted to make sure the wording is correct. And Katie is here. <laughs> yeah, do you want, do you have <laughs> comments on that? <coughs> You're right. Um, yeah, so our intention is just to have a Facebook page similar to the way um, the Cable Commission does, um, the Travel Commission I believe has one. So whatever steps we need to take to do that appropriately, <laughs> We just need to know what those are. Um, we'd like to just use it for education as a way to put out articles and photographs of our historic structures and keep the community abreast of any fundraising efforts for city-owned buildings for um, mm -hmm. restoration. So not to be picky on the wording, but should we be saying CHLPC to create and maintain, or should we say that CHLPC works with um, city staff to create and maintain a Facebook page. I think it's worth um, clarifying. Okay. Then I move to amend mm -hmm. the um, approval to CHLPC working with city staff to create and maintain a Facebook page. Gray, you'll second. Okay. I have an amended motion by Alder Finkler and a uh, second by Alder Gray. For the uh, to work with city staff to maintain, create and maintain a Facebook page. Any further discussion on that? Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, next is the um, consider and take action on the uh, fire department pickup truck. Uh, the information has been submitted with the with all the costs associated with it. Um, these were co uh, costs that were uh, requested from the last meeting. So. Alder Modif would like to make a motion to approve the quote for the quote from Belco for the new fire truck and to add the increase of the 7,850 18 into the 2024 budget. Gray, I'll second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Motif and a gray by, or <laughs> second by Alder Gray. <laughs> uh, 
in, as stated by Alder Motif. Um, I don't know if you want to state that again for Pat to get the wording down. I mean to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to, I am making a motion to approve the quote from Belco for the new truck for the fire department um, and that we add the additional monies of 7850 into the 2024 budget. Any further discussion on this item? Okay, hearing none, all in, well, roll call. Yes. I even have that down. <coughs> Gray? Aye. Motive? Aye. Reed? Aye. Rolke? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Finkler? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. Item number seven, um, to consider and take action on uh, amending the City Council Code of Conduct, Section 4H. Um, as stated, uh, it is in the packet highlighted in yellow. If I can find it. Page three. And for. <laughs> I thought. Oh. Thanks. All their motive can make a motion to approve the revised code of conduct, section four H in in removing the words that say providing a hyperlink to the city website and adding views and opinions are given. Alder Gray seconds. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Motif and a second by Alder Gray to uh, accept the uh, revision of section four, item H, removing providing a hyperlink to the city website and adding views and opinions are given. Is there fur any further discussion on this item? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Okay, next is Consider and take actions on paying the claims in the amount of $336,387.71. Alder Gray moves to approve the claims in the amount of $336,387.71. Motive will second. I have a motion by Alder Gray and a second by Alder Motive to approve the claims in the amount of $336,387.71. Any discussion on the claims? Hearing none, a roll call, please. Motive? Aye. Reed? Aye. Rokey? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Finkler? Aye. Gray? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, and now we have uh, reports of city officers. Uh, Chris, do you have anything to? <clears throat> I was, You're on. I'm on. <laughs> <clears throat> Just a few things. Um, for the next meeting, uh, we want to get the refuse uh, contract that you uh, approved the RFP uh, probably four or five months ago. Uh, it's time that we move forward to the next step in getting the contract. So in September, we'll be doing that. Uh, working very uh, diligently on the bu uh, budget. Uh, the department heads are doing a great job, as is uh, obviously Crystal has been working uh, diligently. So we're hoping to have the goal is before Lisa gets here, our new uh, city administrator we will have uh, something complete for her and she can then take it from there to share with the board so um, that's been one of our major priorities um, and we've been providing uh, documents to the new administrator you know that is uh, 
uh, so she can catch up on things. So uh, that's been working fine. And we're finishing up a little bit on our wage study to update the wage study that was done a year ago and, and kind of make it readable and compact so that um, when uh, Lisa does come that uh, she can be providing it to you to begin uh, that process. So that's all. Uh, that's all I have unless there are questions by the council. Does anybody have okay. any questions? And the the uh, refuse disposal that had to do with whether we're keeping the current uh, bins that we have or if we're going to be getting the new ones, correct? That's the big matter. That's There's the big a small matter on um, uh, some additional services, but that's the big matter. You're right, Mayor. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, the only thing I have is uh, I will be attending the League of Municipalities Chief Executive Summer Workshop uh, the rest of this week, and uh, we'll be meeting with other mayors and village presidents, so yeah, looking very forward to that. Uh, and, uh, you know, continue to, uh, you know, our, our crews that have been out, you know, with the hot weather and uh, doing what, what they do. And, uh, um, you know, I know they're keeping themselves hydrated, but, you know, I, my thanks to them because being out in the hot weather, sweating is not fun. So <laughs> my many thanks to them. Uh, with that, then I would look for a motion to convene to close session per state statute 19.851E for deliberating and negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investments of public funds, or conducting other specific or specified bus uh, public business, whether competitive or bargaining reasons, require a closed session to discuss the sale of city-owned land at 1149 West James Street, Columbus, Wisconsin. Alder Motif will make a motion to move to closed session as per 19851E. <clears throat> Alder Rolke will second. Okay, I have a motion from Alder Motif and a second from Alder Rokey to go into closed session per a state statute 19.851E. Could we have a roll call? Reed? Aye. Rokey? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Finkler? Aye. Gray? Aye. Motif? Aye. Motion carries. Okay. We will be uh, coming back to open session uh, to uh, discuss what we've doing and close and then we also then after that have the committee of the whole meeting so uh, so at this time we are in closed session so
<laughs> okay, and now we move on to number 12 on the agenda, which is to uh, consider a possible action on the request to extend the terms of the offer to purchase the two lots at 1149 West James Street. Alder Gray moves to accept the amendment to the offer to purchase for the extension of October 1st of 1149 West James Street. Alder Motive will second. Okay, I have a motion by Alder Gray and a second by Alder uh, Motive to uh, extend the terms of the offer to purchase at 1149 West James. And I'm going to call for a roll call on this. Uh, discussion. Oh, discussion, yes. Any further discussion on this? Yeah, I just have a few things that I want to say, and I'm going to try to read my notes that I scribbled down here. So I would like us to not extend the offer to purchase for that property. And the reasons why I would not like it extended is that this is something that has been slated for as a public safety building area, and I would like that to still be considered. We can have a study put in the budget to ensure that it's a good location. We can use, it has now been discussed, we could potentially be using Meister Drive, is it? Yeah, Meister Drive instead of the main highway to get in and out so there will be no problems with the DOT there. Um, we also have an ability to potentially expand that property with adjacent properties and make it big enough to be an all-encompassing public safety building. And that includes fire, potential EMS in the future, police, you know, include everybody. And one of the other things is, is if we allow this to go through with another dollar store, literally two blocks from the current dollar store, one of those dollar stores is gonna fail. And if our goal is to have Columbus succeed and continue to grow, this is not the way to do it by putting another dollar store immediately next to a dollar store that is there right now. And the last thing I wanna mention, if plan B for a fire station is Tower Drive, not only is that significantly smaller of a property there is not an ability to do an expansion on tower drive like there is at the old countryside building any other further discussion on this and again i would like to go with a roll call on this <clears throat> Rolke? nay Steiner? Aye. Finkler? Nay. Gray? Aye. Motive? Aye. Reed? Nay. Ty? Hammer? You know, I've put thought into this, and uh, again, uh, what the money that's already been invested in this land for what a specific purpose was, um, has, that's what's been sitting in my, in the back of my head. So I uh, have to uh, go with, uh, what I feel is correct, and then what I've also heard from uh, other people that I feel is correct, and vote nay. So. Yeah. With that, I would look for a motion to adjourn. I will move to adjourn. Read second. Okay. We have a motion from Alder Finkler to adjourn and a second from Alder Reed. Any further discussion before adjournment? Hearing none, we are adjourned. Uh, we will be going back into the co co uh, Committee of the Whole meeting. You want to? Anybody need five minutes? Five minutes. I could do that. Oh, did I do it? Oh, I'm sorry. All in favor of an adjournment? Aye. I, I, Aye. Okay. 
<laughs> Any opposed? We are adjourned. I'm sorry. I, no, no, I thought I did that. But no, thank you. <laughs>
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to tonight's Columbus Common Council Committee of the Whole Meeting. Today is Tuesday, August 22nd. And Pat, if I could have a roll call, please. Finkler? Here. Hammer? Here. Gray? Present. Motive? Present. Reed? Here. Rolke? Present. Steiner? Here. All present. Thank you. Tonight's uh, meeting has been properly noticed, and I am looking for a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Alder Motif will make a motion to approve tonight's agenda. Mayor Hammer will second. Thank you. I have a motion from Alder Motif and a second from Mayor Hammer. Uh, any further discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Do we have any citizen comments for this evening? Nobody else. For okay. Show. All right. Uh, included in your packet tonight, you will find department reports for July from, of 2023 from DPW, the fire department, the library, police, uh, treasurer's report, wastewater treatment plant. And uh, next on the agenda is to discuss the disposal of city-owned asset of the 2017 Ford Police Interceptor SUV. I believe Chief Weiner is going to speak to us about that. Good evening. Uh, this topic is pretty simple and straightforward. My next one's a little complicated. Uh, we have a squad that is in the process of being stripped down and retired. It's a 2017 SUV that was a marked squad. It has 161,000 miles on it. Uh, it may not sound like a lot, but as a police vehicle, it is at the end of its life. Uh, the water pump's leaking. There's a couple of other issues. Uh, so by city policy, uh, we have to communicate with the city administrator about our intentions. We have to offer it to other city departments. Uh, I did both of those, and then uh, the end result falls on me to make a recommendation on what we want to do with it and, my, and to come to you guys uh, for a blessing. So my request is to be able to dispose of it through an online auction, which we have in years past, very straightforward. Uh, the transaction is very smooth. Not sure what medium I'm going to use. There's two auctions, online auctions out there that are pretty good for police squads. And I'm going to look and see what each one has and kind of how the market is. Uh, I don't expect to get top dollar because I'm going to disclose the issues with it. Uh, just in fairness, but it, it is a squad. It's not something someone's going to buy and use as a family car and go on vacations with, that's for sure. So uh, I guess I'm just here asking for permission to proceed with uh, when we get it back, it's currently in the queue at our vendor to get stripped. So hopefully in the next week or two, uh, and when it comes back, permission to throw it on an auction site, and then everything is done electronically and very simply. And then the monies from that will just go into the asset disposal line item per policy. Does anybody have any questions for Chief Weiner? Is everybody comfortable moving this forward? Okay, yes, thank sir. you. And Chief Weiner, you are next as well. Discussion order of 2024 squad. Okay. Um, I was going to write up kind of a summary and include in the packet, and I'm glad I didn't because there's a dramatic change that got brought to my attention Friday afternoon. Um, we will have a squad ready for retirement in the spring, and I wanted to look at buying a 2024 squad and ordering one. Uh, the dynamics on the fleet purchases for law enforcement from all of the three uh, police vehicle makers, Ford, Chevy, and Dodge, have all changed dramatically. Uh, and it's really kind of a mess, and not a lot of people have a lot of answers. Uh, in addition to that, uh, new pricing is going to be released probably in September, with orders start being taken on October 1st. Uh, I have been told that the, all the manufacturers are looking at scaling back on their government production and state contract pricing because that's not where the money is and that the average squad is going to go up about $10,000, uh, which, uh, which is a big chunk. So my initial request, the information I got Friday is that Ford is not taking any new orders for 2024. Uh, they, took, they committed to too many squads in 2023, and they are using 2024 as a catch-up year for those that ordered squads and did not get them. I'm not in that boat. Uh, we bought a Dodge Durango. Uh, so, um, but they are opening the window November 1st to order a 2025 squad, which I would either get in the very end of 24, depending on what their turnover is when they conclude the 24 makings, uh, or it would be in early 25. Uh, Chevy and Dodge, it's hit or miss when I talk to those uh, contacts. 
other than the pricing is coming out soon and that may send me in whatever direction I want uh, because the, the, that's obviously key. Uh, I'd like to have all Fords, even though we have one Dodge now, just for consistency and equipment layout, and you can do a fleet key, one key opens all the squads, uh, but it's all gonna depend on what the cost is and some other things. Uh, what I'm looking for kind of tonight uh, from the council is an is, uh, idea of how you'd like me to proceed on that. Uh, a couple of different things are going on. Uh, the last couple of years, I, I guess maybe it's a frowned upon practice, maybe it's not. Uh, the last four squad cars we purchased have been done with uh, budget amendments and unused wage monies have been transferred and we've done it that way. Uh, potentially this year, we would be able to do that as well and allocate that money. Uh, as you know, I'm in the process with the union of doing a lateral entry hire uh, and I'm, I've got the language worked out with them. I don't have the position posted. So there's a chance that we could hire for the two final vacancies quickly. And I'd still have a big chunk of money, but maybe not to fund this entire project yet this year. But then there's a chance that maybe I won't fill those positions. I'm hoping to fill those positions. But uh, the big issue here is there are so many unknowns. Uh, the flip side is if we don't get a squad in 2024, we will probably be okay. We have the one that is ready for retirement in the spring. We can always put it at the bottom of the list, but then if it experiences a catastrophic failure, then we're in the boat of, do we spend a huge chunk of money, like for a tranny, seven or $8,000, or do we park it and we lose a squad for the year, which really isn't a preferred option. Um, and also, uh, the 50% reimbursement from the state will be coming back uh, in the next month or two for the body camera grant. That'll be about $32,000. Uh, or I could just include it in my 2025 budget or 2024 budget uh, asking for a new squad and do it that way. I know that funding it with these other ways would keep that chunk of money out of the 2024 levy. And that's one of the reasons we've done it in the past because the money's there and instead of going back to the general fund, it was uh, allocated for a purpose for us. Um, so I don't know what, uh, until the pricing comes out, but the problem is between the pricing coming out and when they're going to start taking orders, and I want to be the very first one, if I can, to place an order with whoever, who it, whoever it is, I don't think there's going to be that gap of time if I'm going to do it now in either order a 25, or if I go to Chevy or Dodge and I order a 24, I don't think I'm going to have that window of time uh, between getting those pricings and having a council meeting or two to approve, you know, those transfers. So I'm, I'm looking for some ideas. If we don't get a squad next year, and we'd end up getting one in early 25, we would potentially be okay with that. But in 25, we would absolutely need one. And if we skip that, then we would need two. And that's a problem we ran into back in 2020. We went three years without buying a squad and got way behind. And it was the first thing to go when the numbers were getting a little too fat at budget crunch time for the city. So I'm, I'm trying to avoid that and I'm trying to stay ahead of it. So that, that's why I'm here. If I may, I, I had told the chief I think we should budget in 2024. By approving this, you are committing to that, of course, right? And uh, But I believe, and you can probably quote me on this, that um, it, it, it should work out, this year's budget. Uh, I think it's a good year to kind of put the squad and we have some other equipment in the budget just because of the way the state shared revenue that our uh, representative talked uh, about and some other things are going our way. And if it does come in 25, you know, can always split it as well. So I, I think you should try the 2024 rather than using your labor account to do it. That just a, in general, it's, it's a good budget policy. Chris made a very valid point. I mean, with kind of either direction you're kind of giving me on this tonight, it's kind of, you're unofficially committing to an item in the 2024 budget, and I just want to make sure everybody's comfortable with that. Uh, in addition to the purchase of the squad, uh, the squad we will be retiring is a 2019, and they redesigned the Fords if we end up with a Ford uh, in 2020, so very little of the equipment transfers over. This is the last model year of the old style Fords, but if I end up with a Chevy or if I end up with a Dodge, we have to buy about the same equivalent of different equipment anyways. The light bar will transfer, the radar will transfer, 
uh, the squad computers will transfer, the siren box will transfer, the rifle mounts will transfer, prisoner cages don't, consoles don't, uh, those are all vehicle specific. Uh, push guards that we have uh, won't transfer, so that will be, and I'm just picking a rough number, probably an additional 15 to 16,000 for the first time around. But then if we can, when we retire that squad down the road, which may be after my retirement, uh, most of that equipment, unless if whoever we go with makes a big decision, can just be transferred over and then the flip cost would probably be around seven or eight, just for some routine stuff. So it's a big buy-in first time around. So I, yeah, it, it, it's complicated and, and I apologize, and, but Friday when uh, Napleton Ford reached out to me and just said, hey, you can order a 25 in November, but you can't order a 24 or get a 24 because of their backlog. Uh, that kind of shot my plans. So unless if Ford or Dodge, or unless if Chevy or Dodge are that much more expensive than the Fords are, my preference would be uh, to go with a Ford. But if Chevy or Dodge are a lot cheaper and I can order it and be sure that I'm going to get it in 24, I may change brand again, and it's just what we have to do. Thank you. Alder Reed. Oh, thank you. Um, I definitely want you to be able to get on the list as soon as possible, um, especially in light of the list closing very quickly after opening last year. Yep. Um, if you were able to get your order in in a month and a half, would you need to give a down payment immediately, or how does that work? If I end up going with a Chevy or with a Ford, it'll be through Napleton. Napleton does not have the Ford state contract, but for us only, they have offered to honor the state contract pricing, uh, so there would be no payment. We've, I've talked to them about it, and you know we can pay when we pick the squad up. So if I go with a Ford through Napleton, probably be the spring of 25, so then perhaps if it's budgeted in 24, we'd have to carry that money through. Or, and I don't know if this is an accounting principle thing that isn't good business, uh, we could have the payment December 31st and pay them a couple of months before uh, the squad comes. And in all honesty, we've done that before, just to clean out the books before the end of the year. Thank you. Alder Motive? I'd just like to echo that I think we should have you put an order in right away um, and try to get the vehicle that you want right away. Um, I'd hate to see you have a couple of years accumulate and run into a, some sort of situation, <clears throat> excuse me, where you don't have proper equipment. Um, so, or or if something goes bad, is for the city as a whole, and there's not that much, right. there's not enough funds available in 25 to fund a squad. You know, then we're into 26, and then we're three years. The worst that squad. happens is we carry it over in a budget, and that's just a an accounting easy thing to do um, sure so I, I didn't know I've heard mixed things uh, crystals not here the but does carrying over monies from one budget year to the next year hurt your levy numbers oh, oh okay because because that was one thing I'd heard once before is that if you carry over that amount hurts goes against no your okay I guess that's why I'm a cop and not a finance person. <laughs> but uh, I'm, obviously, as I've shown in the past, I'm going to get make the, the best decision based on the bang for the buck, and especially when I can get it, and that I'm assured I can get it. I know many, many PDs ordered Fords last spring, like spring of 22, and are just getting them. So I, there's a little hesitation in my mind about Ford. But uh, in, in the Dodge Durango, we took delivery of one. Uh, you know, the officers, it's really their mobile office, and one of the things I don't like about the Durango is the inside interior is much smaller. And when you have a vest on and a gum belt and you've got an equipment console and your computer, it's, and that one is being set up now, so I'm going to be curious how it's going to be once we officially get it. But when you sit in that, it is noticeably more boxy and tight inside than the Fords or the Chevys. So I got a lot to balance what I'm going to do. Pricing is going to make a huge difference. I mean, if I can get one quickly and it's more money, I, I'm not so inclined to do that. I'm, just a lot of decisions I have to make based on unknown information at this point. So that's kind of what I wanted to give you a flavor of. Uh, till the price list come out, uh, I won't be able to give you a dollar amount. Uh, 
but I'll do it like I've done everything else it is respectfully but thoroughly as I can money wise are we all comfortable with the idea that the chief should just move forward with researching and yeah. Bring, yeah. Okay. bring us what you want to bring us okay thank you very much for your time okay um, the next item on the agenda is to discuss the beautification committee plan for painting park garbage cans um, that was supposed to be Paula Steiner, but she is unable to be here this evening. However, I do have a couple of notes um, just to answer some questions regarding some of the questions that were brought up last time. Um, Paula did say that her husband also knows this subject very well and could probably field any questions anybody had since they've discussed it. But <laughs> per, per Amy Jo Myers, pool paint would adhere to the barrels. There will be no painting above the handles to uh, avoid some of the chipping issues and wearing issues that we discussed the last time we discussed the painting the trash barrel project. And the paint will now be included in the price that uh, they're asking for um, participation in the event. Um, does anybody have any questions about this that we can... Pass through Alder Steiner. <laughs> Alder. Go ahead. Al Al Alder Motive. Okay. I have two. One, um, this didn't address the issue of topics and are we going to be able to properly field what's put on the trash cans because we are a municipality. We have to be open to all. And then two, um, it's wonderful the paint will adhere, but what's going to happen when the paint starts to flake off and, and needs to be removed? Uh, I think that as far as topics and what you're putting on there, that's why a central theme was kind of encouraged. People are going to be paying to put paint on a barrels. I'd hate to think someone's going to pay whatever amount, which you agreed on, I don't remember exactly, to put something obscene on there. Um, as far as the barrel goes, it's mm -hmm. a plastic barrel. So it, we have the authority to, if we don't like it, we just don't put it out. There's plenty of barrels out there. And there was even a barrel at National Night Out that was painted with, I think it was eagle and stars and stripes and everything. So it's, it's, it's one of those things that I don't really see that much of an issue. As far as, you know, when the paint starts to peel, they can do it again, clear the paint off and paint them again or just get new barrels and paint new ones and do the fundraise all over again. It should last for a fair while, while throughout the park longevity. Yeah, I was, of course, oh. in on this. I saw, oh. yeah, I saw Alder read first. Oh. Sorry. Oh, uh, thank you. I mostly have the same question as motive just for uh, how to have some sort of fail safe against uh, obscenities. This could be just quite a little pickle for probably not that much money, uh, depending on what um, folks are choosing to put on the barrels. And, and I, I really just want, don't want to be policing garbage cans. Alder Gray. Right, like what I was going to say, I'm the vice chair on the committee. Um, so we were talking a lot about that. The, as far as the them getting used, um, I spoke with DPW, spoke with everyone of how they dump them, where they get rubbed, so that that wouldn't be an issue. Um, and they do, it's cycling them out, and it would be more of a continuous effort and a continuous fundraising effort, so you would just cycle barrels out. So that, like, this, as they get scraped up, you know, another one is coming in to play like that's it, it I don't think we should be concerned with that portion is what I'm saying um, that would be part they would be um, self-funding basically for the sorry I didn't say event. that into the speaker so what I want to clarify is is the city going to have to pick up the fee for the new barrels or is the beautification committee have enough money in their funds to assist with the rotation of the barrels Right, the city wouldn't be picking up any additional funds for rotating barrels any more frequently or paying for additional. Are yeah, to it's a. Uh, there is. DPW buys the handles yeah. for the barrels. They're donated to them. 
Yeah. So there's there's no issue there is what mm -hmm. I'm trying to say. Um, I can understand the issue of being worried of what people might put on a barrel, but I mean, people might put on that same thing on one of the barrels when it's not part of a fundraising event. They can go and get a can of spray paint and put it on a barrel no matter what. Like, I don't think that it's a huge concern in my mind. If you're paying and fundraising for something, you're less likely to put something horrible on the barrel than if you're going mm -hmm. to the park at night with a can of spray paint. So I don't think this has, that's my opinion. Alder Finkler. I just want to point out that um, one of the things that I see different in this than last time, and I think to help solve the theme problem, is that this is going to be for youth organizations to be painting on the barrel. So I just wanted to, to call that out. Yeah. And we did speak about that. Um, we spoke about it being open to all youth organizations. So that would include everything from scouts to Sunday schools to mm -hmm. like absolutely any youth organization was the to get around not having a specific theme but also having a captive audience that would hopefully mm -hmm. not be putting obscene things on barrels Mayor Hammer? It, it, and I agree with with all the great and it's you know this is the beautification committee is going to be the one that holds the final word on all this as you're as you're going through this and I, I, I almost have to use the the analogy. This is like trick or treating. We shouldn't be. We shouldn't. This should be a non-issue. It really should. This is a fundraiser. Um, it's a, we. I think we need to trust our beautification committee to be doing what they've researched and to do. So I think this should just be a mute point at this point, and we should be moving ahead with this. So. Any other? Oh, sorry, Paul. There's a very large difference between a can of spray paint to uh, being taken to a garbage barrel and the beautification committee authorizing somebody to put something on a garbage barrel. Big difference. This will not be a problem until it's a problem. And once it becomes a problem, it'll be too late to stop it from being a problem. So I understand what everybody wants to do, but this is a municipality, the beautification committee being an agent of the municipality who is going to hopefully not, but may find itself in the position of regulating speech. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you begin to go down that road, you have some very tricky steps to take. And it may never happen, and I, that would be great. But as soon as it happens one time, it will no longer be worth the uh, fundraising effort that you're trying to support. So that's, that's all I have. I just want to say that as far as painting the barrels, you're guaranteed to paint the barrels, not guaranteed that the barrels are out on display. So, I mean, you're given the option to paint a barrel. It doesn't mean they have to be in the park. We have a lot of excess barrels. You can rotate them through. I mean, it's... It's just not supposed to be not supposed to be much of an issue. I really don't see much of an issue because you're paying like I don't know what sixty or forty dollars, whatever they agreed upon, to paint a barrel. Nobody's going to paint a bunch of obscenity things and pay to do that. It's kind of silly. Can you explain why that won't work? Your comment. That won't work because all of a sudden somebody will notice. How come my barrel's not out there? How come my barrel's not out there today? How come it's not out there today? How come it's not out there today? And uh, then they'll come to the realization that it's not going to be out there. And now you are prohibiting and tamping down free speech. Mm -hmm. this, this, this is, I'm giving every, everything I'm saying is worst case scenario because right. that's what I have to do. And I, I think we um, might be jumping the gun. I don't think the beautification committee had an intention of not putting out people's barrels or not putting them. And part of the um, thought of it being youth organizations is that it would just kind of help qualm that. Um, I don't, it, it, I wasn't present at the last meeting, but the, I don't believe it was ever the intention to select which ones got put out. At any of like it was just they would be put out. Um, I too would have an issue if we were picking and choosing which ones. 
Um, that was part of the thought of it just going to youth organizations is then hopefully we don't have a, or feel a need to censor anything. If a youth organization is paying money to do something, hopefully they're keeping it in line. Hopefully there's a adult there with them helping. It, like, I, I don't think it's, uh, I don't know. This is one of those things that we have to just trust our community to be able to make the right decisions. There's a lot of things like this we can't, I don't think hyper-managing a fundraiser or doing things of this nature, yes, it's a city entity, yes, it is a potential issue that someone could potentially put something not great on a barrel, and yeah, we probably should just still display it if there's something that we don't agree with on a barrel. That's probably worse than, better than not displaying it. But that's a, it's something that we have to trust isn't going to happen. I don't believe it's going to be an issue. I, Amy Joe's been, it's not my meeting, I can't call her, but. Go, yes, please, of course. So, I, how did we, I was part of the Rip for Columbus. Where we did the beautification for Rip for Columbus, and we did benches throughout the community. How did we allow that to happen? Do you remember how that worked? Yeah, it, it's the same thing, like it's a trust. You, you don't remember? No. We've been here as long as I have been. Well, Sydney Fassmeyer was here. We got a grant for $50,000. We painted benches throughout the community. There's some out by the schools and, huh? You painted benches. The, the city did. Yes, that, that's the difference. You painted benches. The city painted benches. The city, the city. If the city is painting benches, I don't have any concerns. But this is this is people yeah, that are. Yeah, the library got a grant. I don't this, know. But this is people that are buying garbage cans so that they can paint their content on them. That's okay. what the difference is. If the city was doing all the painting and the city was in control of all of the content, I'd have no concern. But that's not what the project is. The project is I'm going to buy a garbage can, and my group is going to paint whatever it wants to on it. And that's the difference. Oh. That's the difference. Because you don't know what they're going to paint and you can't control what they're going to paint. That, that's what the difference that's is. That's the difference. I'll be right back. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, Thank you. Yeah, I guess for my concern on like the difference of the, like, the garbage cans being painted versus the benches being painted is that we or more the beautification committee is asking for money for the right to do something so people are going to feel that they have the ownership and the right to have what they want on it if this was just a fun activity having kids or whoever get a chance to decorate barrels i would be much less concerned but it's the way the funding's going that makes it seem just a, a little hairy. The, but the beautification committee can, can set the parameters of, of what, they, what they will allow on there. And if it doesn't meet whatever the parameters are, then it, it cannot be displayed if it doesn't if it doesn't meet the parameters. So maybe. are they really doing that though? Because I didn't maybe. think they were. Yeah. Well, that's I think not what I heard. Well, I, I, so I'm, I think that's what I'm getting at. If this is a huge concern, um, I mean, years ago, this was done not by the city. There was a uh, there was uh, barrels were painted. The one that you saw at National Night Out. That's probably still one of the barrels from 20, 30 years ago when. Uh, the barrels were painted for, uh, I think it was for the 4th of July. Um, and so there were, you know, there still are a few of those barrels that are still out. I, I think if the, if the beautification committee sets the parameters, sets what the guidelines are, this really sh it shouldn't be an issue. Other motive? I think that there's something being missed here and that we had this discussion over other issues a couple months ago and I think that the city needs to look at its ordinance to get stuff in place as to what it will support and what it won't we need to be respectful of freedom of speech and if we go ahead and promote this at this time 
I think we're setting precedent for other things, and we need to get that taken care of first. Alder Gray. Um, it, and it, like the mayor said, it wasn't the intention to set parameters, but I mean, parameters could be set for specific things of, you know, no obscenities, no nudity, no X, Y, Z is allowed. And then if those things were on a barrel, that wouldn't be um, infringing on anyone's freedom of speech. If it was already a known parameter that wasn't allowed on a barrel, you're not infringing. It was already a rule that existed that it couldn't be. So there could be a parameter of rules for the youth organizations that, you know, and the council could even set those parameter of rules that none of these items are allowed. But again, I, I, I think this is just, it's a fundraiser. It's with youth groups and a beautification committee. I don't think we should really, I don't think it's going to be an issue if people are afraid of it being an issue, just setting basic parameters of, you know, no obscenities, no drugs, no nudity, whatever your parameters you want them to be. If they're set ahead of time, it is not limiting freedom of speech if it's already a known parameter. We could discuss this for a while longer, but um, I guess my question is we have to do something with it. So do people want to see this back at the Committee of the Whole with some parameters? Do people want to move it forward under the understanding that we'd like to see some parameters. I guess I'd like to hear from somebody what you want to do with this now. I'm not comfortable moving this forward at this point. I think there needs to be things vetted as far as parameters and what we can and can't do um, legally without getting ourselves in trouble. Okay. I'm, I am perfectly happy moving it forward as is. I would also be amenable if people wanted to set, if council wanted to set parameters to it. Either way for me is fine. Okay. I think we should move it forward as it is. It's, it's really not going to be a terrible issue because we're looking at youth groups. We can set a theme which is going to get people to, I want to sign up and paint these types of things, not whatever I want. I, I, personally, I don't see it as an issue, but I think we can go forward with this and just wrap it up with committee and beautification. I'll read. I'll... Uh, yeah, I feel like it's not quite ready. I mean, we could move it forward um, with the expectation of parameters being given, but I don't know if they're going to be acceptable. Alder Finkler? I'm good with moving it forward um, with parameters. And I would like us to work with Attorney Johnson on that. Okay. Mm. Mayor Hammer? I'm fine with moving it forward with, uh, with the parameters. Okay. Beautification of the committee setting the parameters. I'm also fine with moving it forward with some parameters that beautification committee sets. I trust them to do that. Um, Next on the agenda, discuss beautification committee request for painting of murals and review certificate of appropriateness for mural on community center. This one I have to confess I know a little bit less about. I don't know if we want to discuss this one tonight or table it until Paula can be here. Molly? The only question I have is, is there already funds for this or are they seeking approval of this to then fundraise for funds? There are no funds yet. This is just sort of to get the ball rolling on what we can do and then they're going to start fundraising for it. Because it's okay. going to be, I think they said about $10,000 or somewhere around mm -hmm. there to actually do this and beautification does not have money. <laughs> the only other thing I had then is, I mean, I have no problem with the mural that was selected, but I had thought I had heard grumblings that it was going to be like murals from the hallway here. Yes, that's what we were shown last mm -hmm. time. No, that's a big problem. Yeah, that, that is, was discussed yeah. in beautification. Then this yeah. is what they decided they wanted is yeah, the you red don't, one. Yeah, this was the you easiest. have a copyright problem by doing that. Oh, so that okay. was eliminated. Right. to get those paints out to that purpose, but the beautification decided they wanted this instead. Oh, okay. Yep, I'm good with it. Sorry. Hold the ring. Oh, uh, so I uh, I hate being so negative. I, I'm looking at what we were given. I know it's not a good computer copy, but it just doesn't look like 
professional work. That's not the final design. I, I know, but so far what I'm seeing, we really might as well invite, you know, children groups in um, for doing the painting. I just can't picture paying or having $10,000 paid for it. Um, I, I need to see a lot more um, detail, more things added. Uh, right now it's kind of a cute background that no one's going to really notice. I would just say to that that you're getting a bit far ahead of yourself because that that's not that's just an initial idea markup. There's an actually she has another picture on her phone that's a little bit different than that. They're going to get more details. The person that they're doing is a professional muralist. That's what they do. It's going to look a little bit different than what you're seeing there. But all they're looking for now is just to review: is this okay? That can we move forward? And they'll have finer details down the line once they get funding. This is not the end all line of what they're doing at all there it could change in the future they're just looking to say is it okay if we go forward with this that's all they're looking for Alder Gray and this was I mean it was a big discussion at the beautification committee several meetings ago what mural to use and everyone basically decided on using the redbud tree that's really all that we're wanting to get permission for is to put a redbud tree mural on that wall is it's going to be red bud you know like this is a mock-up of a potential like something similar to what it's looking like but they need to have you know something they need to have some sort of go-ahead from the council before they can start raising funds and actually doing it it's not going nobody wants something that looks like you know unprofessional or not well done it is going to be a you know a good chunk of money it's going to be professional it's going to look nice it's more of you know, red bud being the selection and moving forward so that they can move forward. That's really all it is. Alder Motive? I have less of a problem with what the picture is. I think that that will be lovely once it's finalized. I do think I'd like to see the fundraising happen first. I'm comfortable giving permission for them to, to raise funds and then we worry about what the picture is. I also would like to request that they raise enough funds that if something were to happen to the mural, like somebody comes along with a spray can, spray can paint, that they can afford to fix it and that that's not continued expense for the city. Any other, Alder Gray? I just, it, at what point do we, like, as a council sit here and try to micromanage every little effort of every committee like that is not what we were elected to do we we are a legislative branch not a branch that should be squabbling over fine details of a mural of a committee that's trying to beautify Columbus and trying to do something good for us we should be sitting here saying great this is awesome you want to do this for us it's going to improve our our aesthetics it's going to improve a lot of things awesome let's move forward we're done like I don't I'm just really lost on why we want to micromanage everything so much Alder Reed uh, on a positive note I like where they would like to put the mural um, I'm not concerned about the building siding since I believe it's um, cement and not bricks. So, and the location, it's very visible. So that part I am very comfortable with. Okay. So since this was a two-part agenda ask, let's start with the certificate of appropriateness. Um, are, I guess, are we reviewing that? Does that we go to? Don't. Okay. All right. That's just showing that the HLPC approves. Great. Okay, so if HLPC approves, and the question is, do we like the location? Are they good with fundraising? Are we okay with moving them forward with the idea that they're going to fundraise yes. first before we spend money here? Yes. Okay. No. Great. Uh, next item on the agenda is to discuss the 2023 sidewalk program. Jason, I think that's you. Uh, in essence of time, I will say that this is the best agenda item cover memo I've seen ever. Chris done a great job. Uh, so is there any questions? 
<laughs> no, that's not true. Chris, we agreed that we weren't going to discuss that. Um, no, I think it's pretty straightforward. There was a program here. Uh, I know you guys had desired to do some sidewalk repairs, obviously, in the transition. Uh, the previous contract had expired. There was nothing in 23. Uh, I know we're getting a little late in the season to do that, but I think we could still potentially get some of this work done. I did cross-reference this with our capital project list and identified a few projects that I would recommend not doing sidewalk repairs on because they're part of capital plans coming up in the near future. Um, I did talk to Crystal. It looks like there's some money in the budget for this. So I think the two options here is do we try and do something yet this year or is this something that we just, you know, with Nick coming on board, do we coordinate with Nick, we put a plan together, we move forward in 24. So I just didn't want the time to pass and you as a group ask me why we didn't do sidewalks this year. Alder Gray? Um, I mean, I don't have a strong feeling one way or the other. My personal preference would be um, Nick just got here, let's get with him and get a good solid plan for next year and like, I, I think it is late in the year. Um, what we did get repaired wouldn't be overly, hugely utilized yet this year. So I think just putting it all together more I holistically next year. I hundred percent support that. Nick has enough on his plate right now. <laughs> <laughs> Alder Steiner. I just had a question. I'm looking at you know this sheet. What are these numbers here for? Because there's no legend on this that tells me what these mean. I'm just kind of understanding what all these things are because it's just street names and then sizes and then numbers. Yeah, I think there's actually a cover sheet that might be missing here that has the headings on, but it's my understanding that um, these are, um, there, there were some ratings based on severity uh, okay. in here, um, you know, trip hazard severity, things like that. So I think there are some ratings in here and there was obviously some, some um, lengths of sidewalk that would be replaced. So I think that's a little bit of what you're seeing. I, I, have, I have the full spreadsheet, but honestly, I, I don't recall what they were because uh, I didn't develop it. That was done by inventory by city staff. Okay. That's, that's just all the question I had. I'm totally fine moving this on to next year because we just got new management staff. They're trying to get acclimated to things. and. We're getting close to the end of the last quarter, so the beginning of the last quarter. But regardless, we're we can wait up for a little bit. Mayor Hammer. I yeah, I would agree. Uh, wait until next year. But obviously, homeowners would have to be contacted. I'm assuming that none of these have been contacted at any point. So yeah, if we you know, is there a way to get notice out to them this year, saying that this is going to happen next year and they're prepared. <laughs> yeah, I, I, that's a good point, Joe. And, and obviously, I think that's what we strive for is to give as much early notice as we can. Um, and, and, you know, to, to, I think to your point, I think 24 is a good option as well. I just wanted to make sure that we didn't want to try and get something done in a, in a cycle and make sure there was something done this year. I'll work with Nick. We'll identify the projects. Uh, we'll get letters out hopefully this year, this coming fall now, just to notify people of uh, the repair work coming next year and we'll identify what that is based on the budget um, and I don't know if this I believe this was capital budget money Chris can you confirm that it was $10,000 in the sidewalk and I'm not sure if it's capital or sidewalk or yeah so I don't know if this money has to be carried over I guess is my yeah. question yeah. if it was yeah. just capital borrowed or if it was general fund money so it was general fund money okay no okay so then Uh, the, well, it's special assessed after the repairs are made. So if right. we don't do it till next year, the special assessments won't be applied till next year. Right. So. We'll get the money will go next year, and some of it will be funded by special assessments. Yes, correct. It, it's fine. We're good. <laughs> We're good. The light's on. Now it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So everybody's comfortable moving this forward to next year then? Yep. Okay. Yes. All right. Thank you. Uh, next on the agenda is to discuss the safe built contract amendment and Chris I think that's you there you go all right I got it um, just uh, uh, I talked about this before under my reports that um, as um, Brandon is no longer here there are some decks there are some uh, sheds there are some things that kind of fall through the cracks without Brandon doing them and uh, 
Safe Belt has been doing them. I mean, he's done a fence. He's done uh, a couple decks already. Um, and with uh, Vandewall and then with the help of our engineer, we're really handling it is, is pretty well. So um, uh, this is just the, the final. We're already doing this. This is just the formality of getting this, uh, this done. Any questions or concerns? Okay. Next item on the agenda is to discuss the job description for public works superintendent. Um, go ahead, Chris. Sure. Uh, and uh, had a lot of discussions on this with um, uh, uh, Nick and uh, uh, a few other staff members. And uh, uh, we would like to um, wait till Lisa comes to really see and have her input on this before we bring it back to the to the council. We thought that was best. Uh, because there are a few uh, a few alternatives, so if the council would uh, indulge us to let us wait another month or so before we bring it in, I would appreciate it. My my question is though, Nick, are you feeling comfortable if we wait a month? I know you said you were drinking from a fire hose with DPW. No, it's a lot, there's, there's a lot. Thank you. Uh, next item on the agenda is to review the inspection report for Scout Cabin. And uh, I do believe Mr. Monday is here to discuss that as well with us. Um, you should have that in your packet here. And uh, Chris, why don't you go ahead and start us off there too? Sure, last time. Uh, we were maybe a month ago. We talked about this without we were kind of blind about it because we didn't have the report in our hands. And Brandon the, night, the next day said, "Hey, I remember something about the, a report." So uh, he called the person who uh, did the report, got another copy, um, and uh, it was quite comprehensive. So we thought that uh, okay, now we have some sort of uh, box of what types of repairs it may need some cost estimates probably a little behind um so we thought at least we bring it back to the council and see where they want to go next steps you want something to put in the budget would you like to work with the uh the boy scouts uh on see what they want to do first and then maybe they can come up with a plan and give it to us and which we can react to so that would and i think the i'll find them this gentleman was here. Yeah. Uh, you know his name. I forget it. Here I am. <laughs> right. so, so I don't know if you want to hear from him at this point. And you, just yeah, to, please come up to the podium. He didn't have his uniform on, so I didn't recognize him. <laughs> so, so. I will not sing. Okay, so I am here. Thanks for inviting me. It's a little bit of a late invitation. Um, I can give my opinion on this. I'm a little startled to hear, hey, maybe the scouts can come up with a plan, <laughs> but we'll take things one step at a time. Okay, so um, I, did, I did receive and read this. Um, there is valuable information in here. I do not view this as uh, fully comprehensive. I should give a little caveat here. My day job is a civil engineer, so I might be reading a little more into this than your average bear. Um, it mainly concentrates on some of the externally visible uh, damage near the foundation and near the lower part of the walls, okay? And offers some solutions for how to deal with that problem. Uh, that deals mainly with, you know, rot, 
near the near the building line, some of the site drainage issues, et cetera. Um, it does mention right in the first few paragraphs that the procedure they used was taking a tour on the outside of the building, kind of checking it out there, and then going on the inside of the building. They note very summarily a few things like, oh, roof issues, oh, some floor unevenness, but there's no indication in this report that they made a thorough investigation of, say, the attic, which I've been up there a couple of times and quickly left. Um, also, the crawl space underneath. Same experience. I've been down there a few times, um, made an assessment of what I felt I needed to make an assessment of, and, and left. I don't think that this particular inspection um, went there. If they went there, they didn't record it. So I guess whether or not they went there is a little immaterial. Um, there are some uh, cost estimates at the end. Those seem to be, again, just concentrating on some of those, you know, near ground line foundational things. So I, I, I'm not going to second guess its accuracy with regard to that particular item. I would caution against looking at that dollar value and getting that stuck in anybody's head as, oh, this is what's going to solve the issue on the building. Okay. So those are my semi-professional <laughs> uh, view, views on it. From the scout side of things, um, I don't know that I would have anything different or, or better to say. I mean, it's, it's really a matter of uh, current building condition and improving it for safety, not like in the sense of, oh, scouts could really use this improvement or this expansion or can we do something different with the space, right? That's, that's not where I'm, that, that's not where I'm believing this needs to go. If, if we ever have that conversation, that's three clicks down the road, so. I would be fine if we did another study that's a bit more intensive into looking at what's really going on in the crawl space, in the attic, and making sure everything is, you know, that this report isn't too far off from what actually needs to be done and what an actual dollar value is so we can look at finding ways to find money to do that. Alder Gray? I agree with Alder Steiner. I don't think this is enough for me to go on to make any decisions, really. Um, I think it's also important to keep in mind um, the use of the facility and how they want to continue using it or how they would like to use it. Because if we're going to sink any money into this, I think we need to make sure that it's optimized. Um, and right now, this is basically just a log building. And it's really nothing else. It's not like, I mean, are we going to spend a hundred and some odd thousand dollars, maybe a quarter of a million dollars, and still have it be a log building that's really nothing else? Or are we going to, are we going to have HVAC? Are we going to have, like, what, if we're going to spend money, are we going to actually spend money and make this something better? Or are we going to spend a couple hundred thousand dollars and still have a, just basically a log structure? I would say that's a fair point to make. I think at this point we still just need to have the study to see what can be done, what needs to be done, and then get an assessment of what we feel we should do, as opposed to getting into like, oh, well, how much are we going to do? What are we going to do? It's, let's just get the first initial, where are we at, before we can move forward to where can we go? Right, and that's that's what I'm saying. I, I agree that if we want to move forward with this in any fashion, we need a more inclusive study. I think we also need some testing done, make sure um, if there's any sort of chemical or mold remediation that needs to happen there, because there quite likely could be that we could be overlooking. There could be hazardous materials that are part of this building that we don't know about. So I think there needs to be actual testing, not just structural things, and we need to look at, uh, is, and as part of it, we need to look at like projected costs of what we would do. So we do have to kind of think about different options of what we would do if we're repairing it, because otherwise we can't project real costs. <clears throat> so I, I think if, 
but we also have to keep in mind that this is likely going to be a minimum of $100,000, could be several hundred thousand dollars. We need to decide if we want to spend several hundred thousand dollars on this log building to, for it to be utilized by the scouts. That's, I mean, it, the testing, the inspections, the mock-ups, the quotes, we're going to be spending thousands on that alone. Do we want to spend thousands on a building that's going to probably cost us a quarter of a million dollars, or what do we want to do? Like, it's not, it is prudent for us to make these decisions now, to be honest, mm -hmm. is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Alder Reed. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I was just really impressed to see that the previous study was as comprehensive as it as it was. Uh, I agree that we need to look under the building and see what's really going on under the roof. Uh, that'll be kind of big. Uh, I really think it'll be under a uh, hundred thousand dollars just to shore up the building and make it serviceable to get rid of the rotten logs and replace the roof and some of the under the roof structures. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm really not trying to make it something that it's currently not. On a humorous side note, I received an email yesterday from the Driftless Folk School in Viroqua and they were advertising a temper frame class for learning how to make your own logs. <laughs> So uh, that is coming up this fall if uh, the Boy Scouts want to make their own logs. <laughs> I think everybody in the troop has their Whitland chip earned now. And oh, so we're, you know, well, I mean, we're ready to take the next step. <laughs> Any other thoughts? <clears throat> I think I do too. I'd hate to just summarily say it's not worth doing the study because it's, I mean, it's part of Columbus's history. It's being utilized all the time now, not just by the scouts, but I believe that they've used it as the warm up shack for the ice rink that is no longer in the, in the uh, river. Um, I think it's, I think it's, just its history alone is worth the cost of finding out. I think we owe it to that building and to all the people who have used it before and are using it now. Alder Motive? What is the cost of a study? Roughly. Were you able, were you able to find out how much this was? Okay. Okay. Do you think we're talking tens of thousands? Yeah couple thousand yes if it's just I would again my sort of semi-professional opinion I would guess under 20 okay so and that that might even be a stretch um, I'll go further and say I don't think Alder Gray is too far off in his guess as to how much overall it might cost for, for repairs but like some of you other alders, I also feel like that number needs to get put in place or you know, <laughs> lit up and then make a decision because there, there's other, until you know that number, you don't know what other resources right. you can call on. You don't know um, what order you might do it in. You know, we're not, we're not flipping this for sale and we have to hurry up and get it all done you know, right now. So, you know, there might be some priority that can get taken. So I really, I'd, I'd also advocate, if I could, for that, that study to get a comprehensive um, estimated cost out there. I think we need to do the study. I don't disagree with that at all. I think once we get the study, the first thing we have to ascertain is, do the scouts need a temporary home? Um, because I want them safe, right? Um, and I think that that's what our decision needs to be, is the building safe? And then we can discuss what we're going to cover to fix it, if we're going to fix it, and who else may be using the building. Alder Reed. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, I guess I want to consider doing a study. I don't know if 
assessment and putting out to bid would be another route. I just don't want to spend as much as a roof replacement would cost on a study. So I just want to just really watch things. Alder Gray? And that's kind of what I was trying to get at. Like, it, the study isn't free. Are we going to be committed to spending? This is likely, it, I mean, $100,000 is going to be modest. Like, this is likely hundreds of thousands of dollars. Are we committing to spending this? Like, that's, like, we basically have to commit that we want to spend this money because that, it's going to take this money. There isn't any sense in doing more studies or doing anything else if we're not going to commit to say we want to spend a quarter of a million dollars on this log cabin. Well, but why? Uh, like, be, because there's no sense in it. Like, why are we going to spend five to fifteen thousand dollars to get all of to get more information that's going to tell us we need to spend a quarter of a million dollars and then be like, oh, we don't want to spend a quarter of a million dollars and now we just spent five for nothing. That's what I'm trying to say. We need to have some sort of level of commitment that we are willing to do this when we have a 150k that we need to put into the pavilion for HVAC. We have, um, we need roofs on multiple buildings. We like there's a lot of money that needs to be spent on a lot of buildings. Is this our priority? That's all I'm trying to get at. Like this is. Um, a building that I think the Scouts are an amazing organization. I want to continue supporting them, but is this the priority that we're supposed to be spending our money on on our infrastructure? Like, it, we have a lot of infrastructure needs. It, I'm not against the Scouts, and I don't want you to think that, but my goodness, we have a lot of money we need to spend. Is, do we want to allocate hundreds of thousands of dollars for this log building that is solely used for the Scouts? So why does finding out automatically have to mean that we are the why ones are we who? Spending 5, I'm speaking. I'm speaking. Why does finding out automatically mean that we are the only ones who can spend the money on the improvements? Why can't we look for grants? Why can't mm -hmm. the scouts fundraise? I mean, I'm willing to spend a five thousand dollar or a ten thousand dollar investment to find out what what is needed and what revenue resources or assistance resources there are available. Um, can we just maybe next step see how much it would cost to have a study done? Because I know an educated decision is way better than an uneducated decision. And I know mm -hmm. a study would give us education, but we're sitting here and arguing over how much a study would cost when we should just ask how much a study will cost. It's not going to cost us any money to ask how much a study would cost. And it would probably be less um, expensive if me, we Motive. go back to the original vendor. Alder Motive. I'm sorry. I oh, called I, on Alder Stein I'm already. I'm sorry. I just want to say I think it's a little reckless to just dismiss something you don't know. So we, th this scout cabin has just been sitting there. I mean, it's partly maintained the, the, the furnace and whatnot by the city because it's a city building. But like so many city buildings, and even you, Alder Grace, said last time that we just ignored it. It's just been sitting there rotting away. I think we owe it to the city to maintain its history. I think we owe it to the scouts to maintain a building that they're utilizing and they're willing to look for funding. There's plenty of scouts in town that I'm sure will help out with the organization, help out with the fundraising. But until we have some idea of what is, we're really looking at to do, there's no decision we can make that's going to commit us to anything. And the other thing is when we get that study, this isn't going to be done next year. It's going to take time. The building hasn't collapsed, and until and we know that it's going to, I mean, we got a building downtown that's supposed to collapse over a decade ago. It's still standing there. We need to have that study first, and I think it's valued to have the information than to just dismiss it and say, well, we're not going to spend the money, so just let it fall. I think it's more important as our responsibility to say, this is our property. We need to make sure that this is what we have, this is what it costs, and that's part of the engineering that we do on everything that's done within the city. I just I think we should go forward with a study to make sure that we know what we're getting into before we dismiss it. Alder Motive. I, I was just going to say, I think we should all make sure that we ask the vendor that we used for the first study because he's already got some basis, and so it may be less expensive to go that route. Oh, and also, sorry, I didn't notice that you would. That's okay. No worries. 
um, all the reviews. Oh yeah, I would definitely second that on seeing if the vendor previously used is still available. I think that would just be such a nice starting point to uh, possibly have some savings with the prior knowledge. <clears throat> Alder Gray. And all I'm trying to get council to understand is our municipality has a long history of getting lots of studies and not actually accomplishing anything with any of those studies afterwards and just spending tens of thousands of dollars on studies. I don't, I think we need to have some commitment that we're going to actually do something to spend the money is what I'm trying to say. Like I'm, I'm just tired of just wasting money on nothingness and not actually accomplishing anything. And it's, that's all I, that's my viewpoint. We need to either want to do it or not. I'd like to call for a vote as to whether we're going to go for um, paying for finding out how much a study will cost or not. Uh, all those in favor of moving forward with a study to find out uh, the extent of the damage and what it would cost to repair? Aye. Aye. Well, well, I that wasn't cost. quite the that question. To find out oh, what the cost is. First step. Oh, sorry, my sorry. Yeah. I misunderstood. Okay. Um, so. Yeah. I'm, I'm okay with that too. Okay. Are we all good with that? Okay. Let's start there then. Great. Uh, next item on the agenda is to convene to close session per state statute 19.851E, deliberating or negotiating the purchase of public properties, the investing of public funds, or conducting other specified public business whenever competitive or bargaining reasons require a closed session specifically to discuss the developer's agreement for 1400 Park Avenue. Alder Motif will make a motion to move to closed session per 19.851E. Alder Finkler will second. Okay, I have a motion from Alder Motif and a second from Alder Finkler. Could I have a roll call, please, Pat? Hammer? Aye. Gray? Aye. Motif? Aye. Reed? Aye. Rolke? Aye. Steiner? Aye. Finkler? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, we are in closed session. We will not be coming back to the air this evening. Everybody have a nice night. Thank you. Adjourn. <laughs>